Lake Titicaca. This familiar named lake is located deep within the Andes. Now sliced in two by the borders of Bolivia and Peru, it is not only the largest lake in South America, but it is also undoubtedly the most important historically that can be found anywhere on Earth. Many tales have surfaced over the years involving submerged citadels, mountains of gold relics, and vast ancient ruins scattered across the lake bed. Stories of amateur archaeologists becoming very wealthy from astonishing yet not publicly disclosed discoveries which lay beneath the waves. We found 2,000 objects and fragments, declared Christophe Delarere, a Belgian archaeologist at a ceremony in La Paz. According to Christophe, divers from his team found the objects more than 7 meters underwater off the coast of the Island of the Sun. These included 31 large golden relics. Archaeologists think these discoveries are just the beginning of something far greater, and for good reason. As time goes on, claims made a long time ago begin to appear more and more likely. According to Colonel John Blashford Snells, a notorious explorer, his extensive explorations of the lake, the surrounding ancient culture, and his resulting research, the ancient city of Tiwanaku, very near the lake shores, copied their original building knowledge from the scientists of the mysterious and legendary lost city of Atlantis. Interestingly, ancient Incan legend also corroborates his conclusions, stating that the mythical founders of their amazing empire did indeed once emerge from the lake's waters. The lake was considered the center of the cosmos by the Incan people, and they also somehow knew its shape, something we have only been able to achieve from a very high altitude. Ancient Inca legends tell that after a great flood, the creator god Viracocha emerged from Lake Titicaca. It's stated that he created, though this more than likely means they believe he restored the sun, moon, and stars. Viracocha was fair-skinned and long beard. He brought a great culture to the ancient peoples of South America. The 16th century Spanish chronicler Pedro Sarmiento de Gamboa Recorded in his Historica de los Incas, a tale about Manco Capac, the first Inca. According to Inca mythology, the Inca are the direct descendants of a mythical first Inca, named Manco Capac, who emerged from one of the three openings in the mountain Tambotoco, located 33 kilometers to the south of Cusco, Peru. Manco Capac is said to have created the Incan civilization through Varacocha. Even though his figure is mentioned in several chronicles, his actual existence remains unclear. Could this original and possibly vast ancient culture still be resting upon the bottom of Lake Titicaca? Did something catastrophic occur in our very distant past which filled this lake, once a large fertile valley, filled with what we have all become familiar as the lost city of Atlantis? There are many unusual artifacts that can now be thankfully found within countless private collections all over the world, all of them currently unexplained by modern science. Stones made from pure oxygen, metal objects created in a zero-g environment, unexplained glass cups, slabs and tools, the list grows, and our next artifact of interest could have even once resided within the legendary city of Atlantis. 47 pieces of a mysterious alloy many have attributed to a metal once known as orichalcum. A metal, many say, was only ever found within the once highly advanced city of Atlantis. Discovered within a shipwreck off the coast of Sicily, they were found during an expedition to a wreck believed to be over 2,600 years old. The ship was previously explored in 2015, when underwater archaeologists found 39 ingots of another mysterious metal, the details of which not yet released to the public. This trip, however, yielded an ancient jar, two Corinthian helmets, and the 47 lumps of ancient orichalcum said to have been smelted upon the fabled island of Atlantis. Plato specifically described this rare metal as having been mined there. He even described a temple dedicated to Poseidon, having an entire pillar made from orichalcum. Interestingly, 
After the discovery in 2005, officials began to conceal the true identity of this mysterious metal, attributing other metals such as copper and gold found at the site as orichalcum. News Corp Australia also reported that tradition had it that orichalcum was made of copper, gold, and silver, this statement having no historical accuracy whatsoever. Furthermore, the metal found by the shipwreck team was said to have matched the ancient descriptions of orichalcum. Are they really surviving artifacts from the lost city of Atlantis? They are undoubtedly incredible ancient artifacts and compelling evidence to support the past existence of a highly advanced civilization that once flourished here upon our planet. What exactly is orichalcum, and why is it mentioned within so many ancient texts pertaining to the past existence of Atlantis? And why are the dive team and the subsequent researchers of their finds so convinced of the alloy's identity we find the discovery highly compelling? Divers from oil companies located within the North Sea have been discovering the remains of a drowned ancient city, which once spanned from the UK all the way to Denmark. An ancient city so massive its suspected population has been estimated well into the tens of thousands. A team of climatologists, archaeologists, and geophysicists have now successfully mapped the area, which has revealed just how vast and expansive this once lost land once was. Many specialists are now claiming this was once the real heartland of Europe. This enormous civilization is now believed to have dated back to some 8,000 years ago, and that the landmass was submerged over a period of several thousand years, a submersion which began some 20,000 years prior. Dr. Richard Bates of the Department of Earth Sciences at St. Andrews, who organized the Drowned Landscapes exhibit, covering the finds within the UK, says the data reveals the human story behind Doggerland a now-submerged city of the North Sea that was once larger than many modern European countries. Could these discoveries reveal Doggerland as the real lost city of Atlantis? Several hypotheses have placed the sunken island of Atlantis within modern northern Europe. Most noted among such researchers is Olaus Rudbeck, who suspected that Doggerland, as well as a Viking Bergen island, which is thought to have been flooded by a mega tsunami following the Storega slide in 6100 BC is the real location of Atlantis, a proposition he put forward all the way back in the 1600s. Some have proposed the Celtic Shelf as a possible location, and that there is certainly links to Ireland. Many places have been put forward for the possible location of the sunken city throughout the years, yet none have revealed ruins worthy of such claims, many of these areas being too small to have housed such an enormous city. Doggerland, however, fits the bill. Not only could it turn out to be the largest ancient civilization found on Earth, but it also rests in a possible location based on historical research for the city of Atlantis. It was submerged at one point in its history, and it is revealing astonishing ruins of a once great and presently unknown civilization. Dr. Bates, a geophysicist, said Doggerland was the real heartland of Europe until sea levels rose to give us the UK coastline of today. We have speculated for years on the lost land's existence, from bones dredged by fishermen all over the North Sea, but it's only since working with oil companies in the last few years that we've been able to recreate what this lost land looked like. When the data was first being processed, I thought it unlikely to give us any useful information. However, as more area was covered, it revealed a vast and complex landscape. We have now been able to model its flora and fauna build up a picture of the ancient people that lived there and begin to understand some of the dramatic events that subsequently changed the land, including the sea rising and a devastating tsunami. The research project is a collaboration between St. Andrews and the Universities of Aberdeen, Birmingham, Dundee, and Wales Trinity St. David. I will keep you posted on their future discoveries. Thanks for watching guys, and until next time, take care. After many years exploring the remnants of a past, highly advanced lost civilization, a civilization who after extensive study, we have identified fingerprints of on literally every continent on Earth, whose identity we have relentlessly searched for, we now feel, after several astonishing realizations, that it may have been right under our nose this entire time.
a civilization that no matter which ancient ruin you find yourself within the world over, undoubtedly vanished during a mysterious event, coming to an untimely demise at the hands of a possible cataclysm, with many theories surrounding a great flood of biblical proportions. As most of you will be aware, there exists legends of a mysterious civilization, which seemingly shares these rumors of demise, yet the connection between them, as far as the general population is aware, has never been made. A civilization that many a scholar has concluded was not only a highly capable, technologically advanced and highly intelligent group, but was also hell-bent on world domination. This civilization is most commonly known as the Atlanteans. Illogically, however, regardless of the immense study of this group traveling far and wide in pursuit of this world control, we have only ever been told of them existing upon a single mystical continent, a place that has been searched for by countless people for over 2,500 years. Yet, predictably, academia staunchly deny any existence of this past culture, or indeed its influence upon a now lost part of human civilization. However, we feel this is a clue which will support our following assertions. Researchers and scholars worldwide have discussed Atlantis for many years, proposing a number of theories and personal opinions as to its past location. A theory of a single continental inhabitation we now feel has been a successful red herring, leading many a talented investigator down an inevitable dead end. Ken Fetter, professor in archaeology, however, suggested several things regarding Atlantis in his book Frauds, Myths, and Mysteries, Science and Pseudoscience in Archaeology. Professor Ken suggested, as a result of extensive exhaustive study, that the Atlanteans were incredibly sophisticated, yet perceived as an evil culture that attempted to dominate the world by force. Professor Ken portrays the Atlantean civilization as an evil and war-based civilization, whose only goal was conquest, a hypothesis we feel we can not only support, but extend upon with a large volume of our own research. A Swedish scientist and writer called Olaus Redbeck proposed a rather interesting theory between 1679 and 1702, he wrote a 3,000-page treatise comprising a total of four volumes called Atlantica, in which the author attempts to suggest, and indeed prove, that Sweden was Atlantis, the cradle of civilization, and that all human languages evolved from Swedish. We do not confirm nor deny this hypothesis, but we do feel regardless of where the Atlanteans originated from, they were not existing upon a single mystical continent that sunk into the abyss, but were indeed the dominant force which could be found settled throughout the world. Through our own continuing extensive research of ancient ruins around the world, and the numerous links that we have individually made surrounding these particular ruins, technological characteristics similarities in building techniques, and unexplained architectural advances, we have concluded that these technologies were shared, not constructed by the same group, but shared as if by a dominating force. Varying from continent to continent in style, with slight alterations present in the techniques involved in the construction, of many still surviving sophisticated ancient monuments. We have found, and indeed proven beyond doubt, that there is indeed undeniable links between the technologies used in their construction. For example, the enigmatic tool marks found upon megaliths are uncannily similar. The techniques used to build such monuments, such as metal clamps, although varying in shape and metallurgy, the actual knowledge behind such advancements seems to have been shared by a controlling ruling class, who we now feel matches the known identity of the Atlanteans, the only logical culprit, supported by historical rumor of their technological dominances, the only suspect present within ancient historical accounts, and although these scholars search for a particular continent, we feel we can argue were present on nearly all. 
Interestingly, there once existed an unquestionably important historical depiction, found upon a Mayan plaque, showing the extinction of this mythical advanced civilization at the hands of supervolcanic eruption and a resulting deluge. We hypothesize, and we feel quite logically, that Atlantis sunk due to a worldwide cataclysm, and although they may have indeed originated from a specific location, Atlantis was not a single continent, but the pre-Diluvian world, thus can be identified as the worldwide advanced civilization we have searched for, and regardless of our own continued research, which supports the existence of a civilization that does indeed match their description, clues have also been left to us regarding this possibility throughout history by some of the greatest philosophers to ever live. If, for example, a supervolcanic eruption was to occur, possibly triggered due to naturally occurring increases in solar energy, possibly a cyclical characteristic of our own sun, then this gigantic plume of ash would plunge the Earth into complete darkness for an unknown duration, possibly triggering an ice age. However, immediately prior to this plummeting of temperature, a dramatic increase in worldwide temperature would be experienced due to this belch of volcanic activity. This dramatic rise in global temperature would melt the ice caps at an incredible pace, flooding the Earth and thus giving birth to the legends of the sinking of Atlantis and indeed the biblical flood. This once existing artistic depiction of this event, created by a surviving Mayan artist, not only shows the eruption of a gigantic volcano, but a man in a boat attempting to escape this event, rowing away hopelessly into the rising deep blue ocean, surrounded by drowning parties and a sinking landmass covered in ancient pyramids which can be seen behind. This landmass, according to the artist, was known as Astlan, which translates to English as Atlantis. Our theory that Atlantis was not one continent, but the actual demise of this worldwide advanced civilization, and indeed the world as they knew it, which sunk dramatically, subsequently reformed by this dramatic melting and freezing over the duration of mere weeks or even days, is also supported by a clue left by Plato. According to Plato, and indeed Greek mythology, Atlantis was protected by the god Poseidon who, for some unexplained reason, made his son Atlas king of this mythical land. We perceive this explanation given by Plato as a clue to the fate of not only Atlantis, but the pre-Diluvian world. Atlas being the defining individual and indeed word which could unravel this mystery. Is it mere coincidence that Atlas is incredibly similar in lexical similarity to Atlantis, and also, that it is the name given to the map of modern landmasses, and indeed the oceans of our modern world? Could this making of Atlas as king by Poseidon, claimed by Plato, be an admittance to an awareness of the Atlanteans' fate by Plato himself? With Poseidon deciding the fate of Atlantis, the god of the sea, earthquakes, and thus cataclysm? Has this mythical continent of Atlantis never been found, because we have already found it? Proof of their existence, and indeed inhabited landmasses, being all the existing advanced ancient ruins we so often cover here on our channel, which escape explanation, surviving above the waves. Not only has the ancient pyramids been found to have once been submerged under several meters of seawater, but countless other ruins we have covered also share this intriguing characteristic. Are we looking at the past existence of the Atlanteans every time we explore an as yet unexplained advanced ancient ruin? The instructors of these ruins, the font of this knowledge, having been the Atlanteans themselves, who, just like the legends tell of, met their untimely demise at the hands of a great deluge? we find the evidence to suggest such highly compelling.